We are going to start by taking out the control spool for manual operation and switch it to an ECHA adapter. Take out the adjuster screw and capacity scale screws. Next, take out the screws on the drive pass actuator. Take out the worm shaft, bypass tube, and actuator. Next, unscrew the control spool and pull out the assembly. Put the o-rings on the control spool. There are a total of three. Make sure not to pinch the o-rings. This will cause oil to leak into different areas. Next, grease the o-rings so they don't pinch on the way in. We are using white lithium grease, but you can use other kinds of lubrication to make sure the o-rings don't get pinched. Attach the ECHA control spool to the lead screw. Put the ECHA control spool into the housing. Next, reattach the bypass tube and actuator into the control spool. Make sure the screws are tight. Now assemble the housing to the ECHA adapter. Screw on the ECHA adapter.
Take out the two screws and insert in socket screws to prevent liquid from going into the pump or electronics. Tighten the ECA adapter. Attach the pump to the base. We have already pre-bolted the base, but you will have to do this. There is a gap in the base to allow for piping. You are going to want the pump on that side. Bolt the pump to the top base. There are three bolts for the pump on the top base. We have already attached the pump to our test bench. Now we are going to attach the ECA. Attach the collar with the counter bore inside to the threads. Attach this pit or pin and we are going to set the pump at zero before installation. Now we are at zero. Next, we are going to take the collar for the ECA and attach it flat face to the inside. Then, twist on the ECA onto the pump. As you can see, the ECA is not fully on yet, so what we are going to do is loosen the screws on the back side to enable the ECA to screw in all the way in place. Next, we are going to make sure the ECA and base are level. Then, tighten the screws back up. Align the thread and collar on the ECA and thread it all the way through. Make sure the screw is all the way set in place. When you receive the ECA from AccuFlow, it will always be set at zero. We have wired the ECA for testing. We are going to set the ECA at 100%. 
and as you can see, it is at 100% capacity. When you test this for the first time, be sure to listen for abnormal sounds. If you hear the motor buckle, stop the test and unplug it to see what's causing the issue. Now we are going to attach this clear capacity plate. Screw in the four screws. Now we are going to set the ECHA to zero and align the capacity label to the ECHA zero position. Now we are going to attach the support for the ECHA. We have a nut, washer, washer, and nut, and then one more nut. Align the support with the threads on the bottom of the ECHA, and tighten the nuts to the base and the ECHA. This is the final step.